Are they, mister? Yeah. Drop the reins, mister. I'm taking your horse. But my wife's having a baby. I gotta go to town and fetch a doctor. There's a federal marshal right behind me. Tell him your problems, not me. Now, I lost all the horse. But I'll walk to town if I have to. Johnson, you okay? The marshal's here, thank God. I'm okay, but my wife's having some trouble delivering her baby. She's been in labor more than a day now, and that outlaw you're chasing just stole my horse. She needs a doc bad. <sighs> I've been chasing that rascal on and off for three months now. He's a murdering horse thief. But that baby's a whole lot more important than me catching that outlaw. I'll go get the doc for you. Thanks, Marshal. Lefty, better clean him up. Doc's got an emergency. What is it, Marshal? Oh, it's Maggie Johnson. She's having a hard time delivering her baby. You better get out there. Thanks, Marshal. Well, Marshal, need a shave? It's on the house. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Check again, Ms. Lana. I've got to have them. Okay, Elmer, I'll check again, but I don't think I have any. They didn't come in on my last shipment from Fort Smith. Howdy, both of you. Hi, Nicodemus. Elmer, looks like you're in pain. Looks like and feels like. He wrenched his back picking up that heavy anvil. Oh, well, the next time you need that anvil moved, just come over to the jail and get me. Real men don't hurt themselves picking up heavy loads. Well, are you saying I'm not a real man? All I'm saying is a real man wouldn't hurt himself picking up some itsy bitsy teeny weeny anvil. Oh, Nicodemus. Forget the pills, Miss Lana. I don't need them. My back's okay. Now, Elmer, I can wire Fort Smith and get a special order in here for you in two days. No thanks, Miss Lana. I'm feeling better because I'm a real man. I bet you can't lift that anvil. I'll bet your life on it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yes. Well, there it is. See if you can lift it. <laughs> that little old thing. Well, it shouldn't be any problem for a real man. <laughs> that anvil is so small, I'd be plumb embarrassed to pick it up. It ain't even worth the effort. I need something 40, 50 pounds heavier than that. <laughs> can't do it, can you? Oh, I can too. No, you can't. You're a chicken. I, I just don't want to get my hands dirty. I, I still got my rounds to make and all. And me being a deputy marshal, sometimes I have to shake somebody's hand. I don't want to get them dirty, but you wouldn't know about that being a blacksmith. Don't want to get your hands dirty, huh? No. He don't want to get his hands dirty. <laughs> well, here's a pair of gloves so you won't get your hands dirty. Oh. <laughs> Give me them thumbs. I'll show you just how easy this is. I can hardly wait. <clears throat> Well, there you go. Thank you, Lefty. Marshal, how long before you catch old Rufus Kane? Oh, I'll get him next couple of weeks. He's got a place over in the Cooks and Hills he doesn't think I know about. I'll get him. Oh. What in the world was that? Elmer, get this anvil off my toe. Oh, oh. Couldn't lift it, could you? It just slipped out of my hands. Get it off. 
Get it off. Slip Ooh. nothing. You dropped it, you big old baby. <laughs> What's the matter? I wrenched my back. I can't straighten up. While you're down there, would you get this here anvil off of my toe? Ooh. I can't. I lost my strength. Oh. What's going on here? Well, I reached my back. Well, the animal slipped out of my hands. Oh, 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 it landed on my toe. Ooh, I gotta go to the general store and get some pain medicine. Oh, you're wasting your time. This landed don't have it. They didn't come in on her last shipment. Oh, well, I'll go over to the dock. Oh, no, the dock's not there. He went out to Johnson's place to deliver a baby. Oh, oh. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, Bill. Hold it right there. You can't stop me now. I, I got to get to the Johnson place to deliver a baby. If I don't get there soon, the mother and the baby might die. No, Doc. You ain't. You're going with me. I've been shot, and you're going to fix me up. Maggie, please hang on. Just hang on. The doctor ought to be here any minute. Just hang on. Just hang on. Dear God in heaven, please help my wife. All right, Elmer, now I'm going to lift you up. Oh, oh, I'll never be the same. I'll probably die this way. I wonder what kind of coffin they put me in. Oh, you ain't hurt that bad. I'm the one that's in bad shape. Just look at that toe. They probably had to cut it off. They probably had to cut my whole entire foot off. Well, so? I'll probably never be able to work again. Well, me neither. Unless I get a desk job, I'm a lot worse shape than you are. Oh, boy, stop it. Listen to you guys. You're killing yourselves with your own words. Well, I knew a feller one time that a bull stepped on his toe, and the thing swole up so bad, they just had to cut the whole thing off. Back trouble is a sight worse than foot trouble. You could easily die from back trouble. Foot trouble is much more dangerous, Elmer. Listen. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now, you guys are only making it worse by talking about how bad you feel. Well, then just what are we supposed to be talking about? Proverbs 4, 22 says that God's word is health to all our flesh. Instead of talking about your aches and pains, you ought to be talking about healing scriptures. Maggie, I'm going to run to town and see what's holding the dock. I'll be back as soon as I can. I've done all I can do for you, mister. Now let me go take care of that woman and her baby. You ain't going nowhere till I'm well enough to travel. That could be days. Maggie Johnson won't make it without my help. Again, Elmer, Matthew 8, 17. Jesus himself to go and burn and he bore our sicknesses. All right, 1 Peter 2.24. By whose stripes ye were healed. Marshall, I thought she was going to send the doc out. Maggie ain't going to make it without him. Well, I did send the doc hours ago. He should have been there by now. Well, he ain't. And Maggie's dying. Johnson, you're just going to have to trust in God's word. That's the only thing that can save Maggie now. Nicodemus, can you get your horse saddled up and get another one for Johnson? I can. By his stripes, I am healed. Elmer, can you hitch up a team and drive Miss Lana out to Johnson place? I can. Jesus took mine from me and he bore my sicknesses. Johnson, come with me.
You're going to be fine, Maggie. You're going to be okay. We're going to trust in the Word of God. That's right, Maggie. We're all pulling with you. Mr. Johnson, I need you to get me some hot water and some towels. Hurry. Okay. Maggie, we've prayed and asked God for your healing, and God has heard our prayers. Oh, I feel like I'm going to die. No, Maggie, you're going to live. How do you know? Because we're trusting in the Word of God. Where are you going? Maggie Johnson needs my help. You ain't going nowhere. Matthew 18, 19. If any two of you shall agree as touching anything on the earth that they shall ask, it shall be done by our Father which is in heaven. Father God, I thank you for the power of agreement. I thank you for your word. I thank you because we're standing in faith, agreeing upon your word, Father God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for Proverbs 4.22. Your word is life to those who find it, and medicine to all their flesh. First Timothy 2.15. My wife shall be saved in childbearing. Himself to grow infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Same Lord, we just thank you for 1 Peter 2.24. It says, Jesus himself took our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we were healed. If we were healed, we are healed. And Lord, we thank you for healing for Maggie Johnson in Jesus' name. Boys, let's gather around here. Just start praising God for helping this mother deliver that baby. But there ain't nothing happened yet. We've been standing on God's Word and saying scriptures for two hours now. Well, let's praise God by faith. We'll thank Him for the answer even before we see it. Come on, okay. let's just lift up our hands and do it right now. Lord, we thank Lord, you we by thank faith Lord, for the Lord, answer. I thank you, thank you for saving this mother. She's going to deliver that Jesus baby word. without any sin with her eyes because your word is true. Lord. We thank you for it, Lord Jesus. 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 We give you glory for it. Father, we thank you for the Bible. It gives us hope. It gives us confidence on which we can base our trust. Thank you for a healthy baby. The word of God at work in this situation. And we're going to see the Victory. We have it by Mr. Johnson, better get in here. It's a girl, Mr. Johnson. Praise God. And Maggie? She's doing fine. Oh, glory to God. I know what we'll call her, Maggie. Faith, on account of that's what saved her. Well, I'm going to go see what happened to Doc. Help me to that buggy. You really shouldn't be moved. I'll decide that. I ain't waiting around here for that marshal to show up. You're too late, Kane. Give it up. I gotta get out to the Johnson place, Marshal. Maggie needs me. Oh, Maggie's fine, Doc. She had a baby girl. Well, how'd she do it, Marshal? She had some good medicine. The best. I want to talk to you about something really important, something that everybody needs to know. I want to talk to you about two of your least favorite subjects, sickness and disease. Do you know that sickness and disease don't come from God? No, sir. They don't come from God. When God created the earth, everything in the earth was good. There wasn't anything bad in planet earth at all. But when man sinned against God and he listened to, oh, you know who, the devil, that's when sickness and disease came into the earth. Now, it's not God's plan that you have sickness and disease.
but sometimes we still have it. Well, it's because sickness and disease operate in this earth, and if you don't stop them, they'll come against your body. Now, there are lots of ways you can stop sickness and disease. In a lot of cases, you can stop sickness and disease with good earthly medicine. And there are great medicines that can heal your body and help your body to recover. But you know, sometimes there are things that happen to your body that even the best medicine in all the world can't cure. The best medicine that men can make won't do you any good. But I want to talk to you about a kind of medicine that can heal any sickness. It can heal any condition that affects your body. The best medicine of all is God's medicine. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter 107, verse 20, that God sent His Word and healed the people. You know, God's Word works like medicine. In fact, that's exactly what the Scripture says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4. It says that God's Word is health or medicine to all of our flesh. Now, how do you take medicine? Well, sometimes you take it by putting it into your mouth. You can put drops in your ears. Maybe there's your favorite way, and that's taking it with a shot. No, I'm just teasing. I know you don't like those. But the way that we take God's medicine is the way you take most medicine. You put it into your mouth. You see, when you put God's Word into your mouth, it works like medicine to heal your body. That's why you should speak scriptures, scriptures that talk about healing when sickness and disease come against you. That's what we did to see this woman healed. We spoke the Word of God, and we said it again and again and again, and the best medicine brought healing to that woman's body. So I want to encourage you to take the medicine that can heal any sickness or disease. It's the Word of God. And as you speak it with your mouth and believe it with your heart, God's medicine will work for you. Hey, I thought you were asleep. Do you think you could go to sleep if I read you a little story? Come on.
You know, God has a gift that he wants everybody to receive. That gift is called eternal life. That means you live forever. That means you get to go to heaven and be with Jesus someday. And all your friends and all of your loved ones can be there with you for all eternity. But you can't go until you receive that gift. And the way that you receive it is by asking Jesus Christ to come and live in your heart. Now, he won't do that unless you ask him to. But if you say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me, and I believe you were raised from the dead, and if you ask him to come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, he'll hear your prayer. No matter where you are, you don't even have to be in church to do it. And he'll come and make his home in you, and you will have God's gift of eternal life.